Hello again. What we're going to do today is the binomial theorem. And the first part of what I'm going to do is called Pascal's Triangle. And uh, Pascal's Triangle wasn't actually uh, invented by Pascal. It was named after Pascal. Uh, somebody must have liked him and gave him credit for something. Uh, but before we get to that, I usually have uh, something like this on the board. And I usually just go with this, and I don't want to go with anything more than this. And, you know, students, students walk in and say, this is what you're going to do today? And I'm like, maybe. He says, oh, it looks difficult. I say, well, I don't know. You, you want to talk about something else beforehand? Of course, students are always more than willing to talk about anything else that they don't think has to do anything with math before uh, they get to math. And of course, when you set up your story, you got to make sure it gets to what you're supposed to get to. And how I started uh, is I say uh, something along the lines like this. Um, you know, I, mean, I was thinking of something very important today. And, you know, one of the students will usually bite and they'll say, okay, what did you think was so important? I said, you know, you're going to all grow up soon to be adults. And they're like, yeah, we are. Yeah, and there's like this like moment of satisfaction that they are. And I say, you know, one of the biggest decisions uh, adults have to make is, uh, especially in the United States, is how many children, you know, they should have. And uh, some kids say, oh, I don't want to have any children. And some kids say they want to have a lot of children. And, you know, this sparks up, you know, an interesting little discussion. I let it go for about 10 seconds and say, I got something to say. I say, well, what do you think is the uh, most appropriate number of children, you know, uh, uh, you know, husband and wife can have? And then, you know, some people say, none. And then some people say, you know, like, two is good. And then, you know, some people say, well, two is not enough. I want ten. And so on and so forth. And I try to navigate the conversation back to how it's going to deal with uh, Pascal's triangle. Um, I say, well, what about four? And people say, yeah, I mean, four is okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a little and it's not too much. Although I think four is perfect, too. And they say, yeah, four is good. Yeah, four is good. And then I ask them, well, like, how many, how many different ways can you have, um, you know, uh, four children, you know, like, in terms of sequence, you know, girl, 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 boy, 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 and all that good stuff. And I, uh, I continue along, and I say, you know, what, what's the best, like, combination, you know, like, one, one girl and three boys, uh, no girls and four boys, and then somebody says, no, no, like, uh, two girls and two boys is good. And I say, oh, okay. So it, it goes exactly where I want it to. It just takes, a, it takes that investment of about uh, two or three minutes. Say, well, okay, well, I wanted to show you something called Pascal's Triangle, but I want you to keep what we just said in mind. And it's not too difficult. Um, I'll show you what Pascal's Triangle looks like. And I draw one, and, and then, you know, people say, is that it? I'm like, no, it's got to look like a triangle. And then we draw a one and a one, and then they say, is that it? And I say, well, yeah, I guess it could be if you wanted to stop there, or you could keep going. And she said, well, I don't want to, but it seems like you're going to no matter what. And I said, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm going to do. And what's interesting is when you're drawing this triangle, you're always drawing ones. You know, that go this way and this way. It's like a pyramid with ones. But, uh, not on the inside, but only on the outside. So when you draw it again, you got one, 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 and one. I'll just put in equals here really quickly. You know, what does this have to do with anything? I'm like, well, it would seem like it has nothing to do with anything, and you're probably right, but actually that's not the case. So we continue with this right here. I say, well, you know, I've got one term here, I've got two terms here. Let me show you exactly what it has to do with something. Uh, when you're filling out this triangle, what you do is you have to fill out the inside. The outside's easy, it's just ones straight up and down. Uh, when you're working with this, Pascal's triangle doesn't always work, and that's the catch that I show my students later on. What you got to do now is fill this in. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. That's all you do. So anything where you have like a connection that goes down, you have to connect it. Uh, 1 and 2 make a 3. 2 and 1 make a 3. And then I say, well, can we fill this with anything? They say, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, people are a little hesitant. Like, is, is that 4? I'm like, yeah, it's a 4. 1 and 3 make a 4. 3 and 3 make a 6. 3 and 1 make a 4. That's just a 1. And I say, congratulations, you just figured out the coefficients of a, uh, you know, a variable plus another variable where both coefficients were one, all within a quantity to the fourth power. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, okay, let me show you, uh, because maybe this doesn't make sense. 
If you take v to the 0 and g to the 0, you know, expand it, well, it's just going to be 1. You can't do anything here. This is 1, b0, g0. And then this becomes 1, b1, g0, b0, g1. And this is causing a lot of confusion, so don't be afraid and say, oh, I, I have no idea where this is going. Don't worry. Most students don't necessarily know where it's going just yet. And then I ask students, does this make sense? And they say, uh, not really. And I say, okay. Well, what basically happens is when I take all of these, th this is my resulting answer. You know, uh, b plus g, uh, quantity squared, factors out to 1b squared, and then g0 is just you know, 1. Anything to the 0 power is just 1, so it's arbitrary. Plus 2bg plus 1g squared. You can ignore everything with a b to the 0. And then I say, you know, like, what does this have to do with anything? I said, well, we were talking about that problem, you know, with the number of boys and girls, and, you know, like, what's the perfect number? And you said four, although I kind of uh, led them to it, and then they said, well, two boys and two girls is the best outcome. And, well, if you have, uh, if you're having boys and girls, and you want to have four children, it's like writing out the binomial b plus g to the fourth power, and it expands to this. And what's really interesting is there's one way you can have four boys and no girls. Boy, 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 boy. There's four ways that you can have three boys and one girl. There are six ways you can have two boys and two girls. Four ways you can have a one boy and three girls. One way you can have no boys and four girls. And somebody says, yeah, that, yeah you're lying. I mean, that, 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 that's, that doesn't actually work in real life. And I say, well, it actually does. If you don't believe me, I'll go ahead and I'll show you. Uh, here's the example where we talked about, you know, having two boys and two girls, because that would be perfect if you had four children. And there's six ways to write it. You can write it as boy, boy, girl, girl. You know, your uh, two oldest are boys and two youngest are girls. Or you can write it boy, girl, boy, girl, where the oldest is a boy, then a girl, boy, girl. Or you can write it boy, girl, girl, boy. Now that happens if boy's the oldest, but watch what happens this way. Girl, girl, boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, or girl, boy, boy, girl. Six different ways you can have four children if you're working with boys and girls, in which two are boys and two are girls. That's really cool. Besides doing that, you can actually just apply it to expanding. You know, if somebody's like, what's x plus y, you know, to the power of 4 in a quantity? Well, actually, let's use b plus g because that's more consistent. Well, it's 1b to the 4th plus 4b cubed g to the 1st plus 6b squared g squared plus 4b to the 1st g to the 3rd plus 1g to the 4th. I ignore b to the 0. That's trivial. It's capricious in nature. And that's pretty cool. Uh, the problem with uh, Pascal's triangle is it does work in this example. Uh, b minus g to a power of n, although the signs get uh, switched. So what we do is we use something called the binomial theorem. And students say, well, I don't care, I'm just going to switch the signs and take a guess. Well, good for you, but the problem is that let's say you have this instead, where now you're working with um, numbers in front of the variables inside the quantity, you can't use Pascal's triangle anymore. So it is really cool when you first do it, and as long as you stay with, you know, a quantity of, uh, you know, 1 times a variable plus 1 times a variable to the power of, you know, anything, you can use Pascal's triangle to perfect success. If uh, you're changing it, though, you know, if you're putting a coefficient other than 1 inside, uh, in front of a variable, or if you got a negative, well, with a negative you can actually switch the signs. But if you have coefficients that you're working with instead, 
this doesn't work so nicely anymore. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do the binomial theorem, a very simple example. I don't want to go too far into it. I'd rather go like maybe to uh, yeah, fourth, third power, actually, because you can check the third power on your own if you want to. Doing the fourth power is a little too cumbersome. But checking the third power is actually relatively easy. You can check it yourself, too, if you want to prove it. Uh, but with that said, I hope you found that at least you know, somewhat kind of uh, useful, you know, besides just practical. Uh, but for right now, have a great day. Goodbye.